Woods with Fine Art Connoisseur, and today we're interviewing Terry Trotter of Trotter Galleries, which is a specialist in old California art. Let's see, um, my wife Paula and I started the gallery in uh, in 1980, uh, a few years back now, and uh, uh, our focus was at at that time. Uh, we wanted to focus on the, the art heritage of California mm -hmm. and um, um, uh, there was very little, little scholarship at that time that had taken place and very few museums had, uh, um, had any uh, sort of exhibition in that direction. Um, and, uh, but there were things that were happening. Some of the, uh, some museums, one in particular the, in Los Angeles was deaccessioning works of the early California artists. and. Uh, uh, some of the uh, a very uh, select or a smaller handful of the earlier older collectors were, were buying those paintings. They had the knowledge of the standing of these artists in their times and, uh, and the wherewithal to, to make some, uh, some very good purchases. At the time though, those were very strong prices. Five or ten thousand for a major painting was a lot of money at that time. And so that kind of made the news and uh, uh, that was back in 1978 and 79 and at Sotheby's at, in Los Angeles. And uh, so we were aware, started to become aware of, of some of the earlier artists okay. and uh, proceeded to uh, 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 you know, further our um, um, collecting as, as well as dealing and acquisition during that, that time period. So, um, I think some of the, uh, as, let's focus on maybe the museum, uh, Curators, I think they've, they've done a, uh, an excellent job uh, through the 80s into the, in the 90s and, and currently as such. Um, and uh, uh, Tom Enman early on at the Laguna, uh, Laguna Art Museum, mm -hmm. uh, currently at Bolton Colburn, who's there, has been there for many years. Uh, next week, actually. Right, okay. And also Harvey Jones, the Oakland Museum, the longtime uh, curator of American art at the Oakland, mm -hmm. Eileen Ford, the LA County. Um, we have uh, at the Monterey Museum of Art currently uh, Mike Whittington, Scott Shields at the Crocker Art Museum, the okay. past director of the uh, California Historical Society. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's many people that were very, very involved and have become... Uh, so you look up to the curators as... Yes, and, and I will also say in the academic side as well, mm -hmm. uh, Bill Gertz, Professor uh, William Gertz at NYU, considered the foremost authority on, on American <coughs> Impressionism. Uh, Will South, who has co-written and co-curated uh, many uh, major exhibitions, uh, and also, uh, uh, well, there's, there's, there's a host of, of people there. So. I'd say when my wife and I uh, made the acquisition of uh, uh, the, probably considered one of the, the most important figurative works by Guy Rose, a mm -hmm. uh, painting titled The Blue Kimono and uh, painted in Givigny uh, circa 1909. There's, yes, there's, there's been more than one that's got away, but I tend to focus, uh, I really couldn't really single out any particular painting. I think we uh, tend to all hopefully get our share over, over time, but uh, uh, you know, we tend to focus on, on the ones that have come our way, and that's a, more of a positive aspect of collecting as well as dealing. Probably say the National Gallery. Yeah, uh, that was uh, uh, at the right at the time period. I, I, my first visit to the National Gallery uh, was uh, during the bicentennial years, and that was uh, when I uh, that was my really first introduction to American art specifically, and uh, uh, and then and then within just two or three years later, became focused on the California. Art heritage, so, but that was the, my initial experience, the awe of, of the of the American art in their collection, and um, and the artists that came out west early on, and the grandeur of what was be, being depicted, and then to transfer that uh, that interest into wanting to know more about what we had out here on on the west coast. The the trend towards towards quality in the aesthetic depiction by significant artists. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this happening over quite a number of years now, but it's becoming more and more important to, uh, to really focus on, on um, primary examples by formative artists. And um, 
we see um, uh, the collectorship being very uh, becoming uh, has it has become very astute. And even the earlier uh, in earlier in earlier days, I'd say the the biggest regret by some of the w people that became major collectors uh, was that they didn't um, step into let's say more exp uh, more formative works by major artists that, because they were expensive at their time in their time. But but those are the artists that have also accelerated. In, in value as well as scarcity on the market. So I see the trend is for, uh, at least for the, for, for the majority of people that we're, we're meeting uh, these days, is, uh, is, is, is really, you know, if they, if they love a work, to really purchase the best they can afford. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd say it's a, it's a great experience to be involved in, in working in the, art, in the art world, in the art field. Uh, and there's many different areas uh, uh, that one can gain that, that experience, whether it's through working uh, with a dealer uh, through an established gallery or a, a newly formed gallery, uh, uh, working for maybe a, an, an established art association, um, becoming a, uh, uh, maybe a docent at a museum uh, or museum staff. So you um, would definitely encourage them to become a part of our field. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, I think it's, it, what, uh, it's such a positive experience. And um, the visual um, enjoyment, I think, re relates to the, uh, uh, I think, a quality of life day to day that one can experience 24-7. Um,